Hey you guys, welcome to the Tips from the Top call with Christy Hull. We're super excited to have her on with us tonight. So Christy is going to share her story and we sent her a few prep questions ahead of time and she'll get to those at the end. So we're super excited to have you tonight, Christy, and we say thank you again for joining us on the call. Oh, well, thank you all for having me. Um, like Kimberly said, my name's Christy Hull. I am from Arkansas and I have been with Plexus for right over three years. So last Friday was actually my three-year Plexiversary. And um, you guys, this literally is a life-changing opportunity. And so I'll, I'll share a little bit of my story with you guys really quickly. I hope I kind of get long-winded sometimes, but um, I'm a product of a cold message from Rebecca Folks. She messaged me in July of 2013 and said, that she had come home to visit and Elizabeth James had sh told her about this pink drink that you could lose weight on and business and blah, blah, blah. And she said, I know you'll be good at this. Like do it with me. And I can't tell people no. So, um, I told her to send information over and I'd look at it, but I had no intention of looking at it. And so like a good ambassador, she followed up with me for four months, you guys, four months, once a month, she would send me a quick message and said, Hey, have you had a chance to look at it? What are you thinking? And every month I had to make up an excuse like, oh, I've been busy and which I legitimately had been busy. Um, but um, I guess in October, I started seeing people that I personally knew taking the products, having success with the products and the business. And so sitting at my desk on November 11th, I thought, Christy, it's $34.95. You are going to kick yourself in the behind if something comes of all this plexus stuff and you let that opportunity pass you by so text rebecca my lunch break and said hey i'm going to sign up today and i have literally never looked back now i'll tell you that my mindset was about this small as to what could come of this opportunity when i first started so my big goal with plexus was that if i could be making 500 dollars a month by the end of my first full year with Plexus that I would feel like I had hit the jackpot um, because I had done a network marketing company probably like 10 years ago for like three months and you had to have parties, you had to deliver products, you had to put in people's orders. It was a nightmare and especially for an introvert like me, I literally like cried every time I had to go to a party and talk to people at their house. And so I swore off of network marketing, said I would never do it again. And so my, my, my mindset was kind of that, yes, that, that happens for people. Like you can be successful with network marketing, but it only happens to a couple people and you never know who they are. Like they're just these like mystical creatures, like maybe they're made up people or whatever. And so, um, I guess about my third month in, I went silver and I like business started picking up cause it was January. Like everybody had, you know, new opportunities on my brain, um, getting, better finances, getting healthy, losing weight. So my business really picked up and I made like $700 that, that third month. And I was like, oh, well, I've met my big goal that I was hoping to reach like in a year. So maybe there's actually something to this. Um, that's when I decided like, I'm going 100% in. I'm going to give this my all because if you're going to do it, like do it, like you want to do it. And so I just reckoned that my goal was to be Emerald by my year month. So in November of 2014. So um, business picked up. I started messaging a lot, really reaching out, um, getting outside of my company. Okay, can you see me? Okay, I don't know what happened, but um, okay. anyway, so I was working a full my full time job this entire time, and so I literally fit plexes in the nook and crannies of my day. So I had an hour to and from commute work to work. So I would listen to phone calls, do follow ups with the voice message, you know, do phone calls with people on my hour drive, and then on my lunch break, that's when I would post on my team page follow up with customers, you know, send out my cold messages, whatever. And I, I really wasn't a TV watcher. 
never have been, but the little bit of TV I did watch, I just gave that up in the evenings because I knew that it would way be worth it if I didn't watch TV at night and I concentrated and focused on my plexus business and helping my teammates do the same thing. So um, a year into the business, November, actually November 8th, so my um, year anniversary month, I hit Emerald and, <clears throat> you know, earned the Lexus, earned the trip to Hawaii, and um, at that point was, you know, making a six-figure income with this, and just thought, oh my gosh, I can't, be no, I can't believe this is really happening. And a couple months later, uh, January of 2015, I Sapphire, and um, I'll, I'll kind of back up a little bit right here and say that when I started Plexus, for us, like, I had a really good job, like, a really good job that I'd been at for 10 years. I'd worked my way up. I owned part of the company. My husband and I, we also own Sonic restaurants. So for us, when I started Plexus, it wasn't about the, like, we need the money. For us, it was retirement money, like buy a vacation home, like fun money, you know, pay off our, our to, new to us, but built a 1987 house that we had just bought and um, stuff like that. And so, um, all of that changed three days after I went Sapphire. So went Sapphire on January 28th and February 1st, my husband was in a really bad car accident and our world completely stopped. Um, he ended up being in the hospital for 47 days. Um, we're like, what, 20, 22, 23 months in, or I guess 22 months into this um, journey with him and possibly going to have to have another surgery in a couple of weeks. And so, um, you guys, I was able to stay with him the entire time in the hospital. I went home for like a couple hours. That was it. Just two different days to like, you know, take a shower in a real shower and have some peace. Um, and I was only able to do that because of my Plexus business. Now, could we have survived with me not going back to work? Um, Without Plexus, we could have. We would have had to change our lifestyle. And if you know me at all, like I am a tightwad. I am super frugal. Like Kyle, my husband always says to me, you act like we're not even going to be able to buy groceries next week. Like I still act like that as a diamond. And so I'll be honest, like if it wouldn't have been for Plexus, even though we could have made it, I probably would not have quit my job because I'm just like a scaredy cat, you know. And so, um, didn't go back to work. I, um, quit, officially quit my job April 21st and went diamond seven days later on April 28th. So my total journey to diamond from, from when I started was 17 months in and fifth, up to 15 months of that, I worked a full-time job. And then the next two months I was in the hospital with my husband. So, um, number one, I always say that to say that you guys literally it's a life changing opportunity. Number two is if I can do this working a full time job and no, I don't have kids and I, you know, I always, when I have my nieces and nephews, I'm like, I really don't know how people with kids do it, but I know that y'all are used to having kids. So you're already used to the chaos. Um, so it's easy to fit it in. But you can literally work your business, get to the top by being a super crazy, busy person. You just have to be super intentional, okay? Super intentional. You have to be super consistent. And you have to hold yourself accountable and make yourself legitimately work your business every day. Now, Maybe you only have 15 minutes a day to work it. Maybe you have two hours. Maybe you have four hours. Whatever that is, you need to figure out, okay, what is going to be the best use of my time? And sometimes people have to set a timer and say, okay, 15 minutes, that's all I've got. But I'm going to be like laser focused. Like I'm not doing anything else. I'm not getting caught up on scrolling on Facebook because that can just, that eats up so much of your time. I mean, that even happens to me and I catch myself like, Christy, what are you doing? Like, yes, you're looking at all these posts and stuff, but it's not growing your business. It's not helping your team. So being super intentional, holding yourself accountable. And if you have even have to get an accountability partner, 
um, and, and letting, you know, once a week y'all saying, okay, what did you do in, in your business this week? Like how many hours did you work? Like how many cold messages did you send out? But it can be done. And I always tell people if it takes you 17 months, like it took me to get to the top or 17 months to get to Emerald, or it takes you five years. You know, there was, there was a teacher on my team and at one point she was going to quit because she was like, that's just taking me longer than other people. And her husband was like, have you lost your mind? Like you're already making more than you make as a teacher. When are, when is your school district ever going to buy you a car ever going to send you to Hawaii? Like you could work for them for 30 years and that's never going to happen. So what, who cares if it takes you five years to get to Emerald? Like nowhere in corporate America, can you do that? I mean, I worked somewhere for 10 years, owned part of the company, and I still wasn't making as much as an Emerald makes, okay? And that's 10 years after, like, literally busting my bottom and giving those people 75% of my life every day. Um, so, you know, I'll go on to talk about my product testimony, but and, and then I'll talk about some, after I do y'all's questions, I'm going to talk about some other tips, too. Um, but I want you to understand that, you know, if I can do it, I'm an introvert. I'm from a small town, 282 people. Um, you know, I didn't have a whole, a ton of time. I really like, I'm scared to death to talk to people. And this is a secret that nobody else knows. I haven't even like told Rebecca yet, but y'all, I'm scared to death to do videos like live videos. Okay. I have been, I told myself, that I was going to do a live video on my three year anniversary on my Facebook page. And we're four days past. And literally the other night I pulled it up and I typed in like the title and I sat there for 45 minutes. Like I couldn't make myself push the button. So like that just goes to show you that even somebody like me that's at the top of the company, like I still have fears and, and stuff like that still holds me back, but you can work your way around it by, by finding your strong suits and using those. Okay. So, okay. Let's talk about my product testimony. Um, when I first started Plexus, um, again, Rebecca had only told me that it was about weight loss. And at the time I was probably in the pop, one of the fittest states of my life so I was like, well, I don't need to be drinking that pink drink. Like, I, I don't need to lose any weight. And so I really didn't start taking the products until January because th th then I started learning about all of them. And I was like, oh, it's not for weight loss. So even though I was super fit and I ate healthy and I knew that sodas were horrible for me, I was addicted to drinking Coca-Cola. Like I would have five, six, seven large Cokes a day. Okay ridiculous and I have been able to kick my soda addiction now I still tell people I never say I've not drank a soda in three years because even though I still I know now that it's like I know now that it's even worse for me but after all the stuff I've learned it's I think it's a mental thing and every once in a while I just want that want that taste and so it's a big change though from you know going from seven five six seven large cokes a day to none. So that's a huge product testimony for me. The other thing was I always had that two o'clock crash and I just thought that that was normal. Like you get through eating lunch every day and I would literally be like sitting on my desk, like holding my eyes open, like, Oh my gosh, I just need to get through this afternoon. I just need to get through this afternoon. Another thing that's been great for me is um, I've, I have real nails for the first time ever in my life. I'm a picker. And so I've never, my nails have always been super thin and they're thick now. Um, and I, I do get an overlay put over them because I'm a picker and I'm still going to pick them off even if, even though they're super strong. But that is, I mean, 30, I'm 33 years old. And for the first time in my life, like I don't have man hands. Um, <laughs> And let's see, I'm trying to think what else. Really, I mean, I didn't have a whole lot of like health issues, like I said, because I've always like worked out and been pretty healthy. So it's helped me kick my soda addiction. It's helped me, you know, not have that two o'clock crash. It has helped me to be a better morning person because that is just 
not me at, at all. Um, and as far as y'all wanted to know what my favorite product was, I'm like, I can't believe they're making me pick a favorite product. Like, can I have three or can I have two? And so I thought about it and I'm like, okay, if I could only pick two products that I would probably never go without, it would definitely be the first one be the probiotic because I legit a hundred percent legitimately feel that every person in the world can benefit from a probiotic specifically ours. And that just does so much for your body. Like I've seen so many results just from that one product. So our probiotic and the X factor um, vitamin, because for one, Again, that's a product that a lot of people can benefit from. And um, me, I know I've always taken fish oil and hair and nail vitamins and multivitamins, prenatal vitamins, and they would always make me sick and I never got any results from them. And so I just feel like the X Factor is a, is a great product overall and um, you get a ton of benefits from that. And obviously, I mean, I love the pink drink too, but if I only had to pick two, those would be my two favorites. Now, cold messaging tips. Okay, I love this subject because like I said, I'm a product of a cold message and several people on my team, um, one of them is Dana Kiopel. She is a senior Ruby on my team. She's a product of a cold message and she's been a rock star. And Rebecca was actually a product of a cold message. And so th this is gonna be my tips on cold messaging. And usually when I cold message people, I'm cold messaging them for the business, okay? So I always tell my people, if you have somebody written down on your list for the business, there is something in your, like, about them, about how they are, about how their, their life is, or whatever, that made you write their name down and say, this girl would do awesome at this business. This girl would kill it, or this, this person, I know they need it. And so whatever that is that made you write their name down, maybe it's one, two, three, four things, whatever that is, then that is what you need to tell those people, okay? In your cold message, that is what you need to lead with. Because let's think about it. Women especially, we're our own biggest critics, okay? About how we look, what we're wearing, like what we can do. We never see the good qualities that other people see in us. And so if you just go into a cold message and you're telling them what it's done for you and you're giving them like facts about the company or facts like statistics about the products, whatever it is, then they're already telling their self that's awesome for you, Kimberly. And that's great that it's working for you, but me, it could never work for me. That's what they're telling ourselves, Okay. But if you lead with, Hey Dana, it's so good to like keep up with your family on Facebook. Your kids are beautiful, precious, whatever you want to say. Okay, I know this is probably going to come as a surprise to you, and maybe you've seen me posting about Plexus and you think I'm a little crazy, um, but I want you to do this business with me. I want you to be on my team. I know that you would do so good at it, and this is why. You've got a big network. You're active on social media. People follow you. People trust you. You know, she, was a, um, she loves to buy clothes for her kids. And she's a teacher and her husband's a coach. And so I also knew that she would love to have the extra income to be able to spend money on her kids' clothes and not have to be worried about her, you know, spending habits. And so I'll, even through that one in there, you know, I know that you would love to, you know, have extra money to spend on your kids' clothes. Um, you know, this is what Plexus has done for me. And I, you know, named two, get, gave my quick little testimony financial-wise in like two or three sentences. And um, then said, would love to send you some more information, talk to you. I, you know, like I said, I know you'd be great at this business. Short and simple, leave it at that. And by leading with what you know that they are good at, why you know they would be good, do good at the business, as they're reading that to themselves, they're thinking, okay, well, Kimberly, she's been successful at this. And if she thinks I can do this, then maybe I can. So it's changing their mindset. It's breathing belief into them before you ever present like the opportunity and tell them all the ins and outs of the business. So after I send that message to people, they'll usually write back and say, Oh, I'd love more information. Would love to talk to you on the phone, whatever it is. I have an email that I've written up 
and it, you know, breaks down the 11 different ways we get paid. And then it has my testimony on the very bottom. And so it's got my, you know, it talks about how I didn't want to do it when I first signed up. I had, you know, I had a very small mindset, talks about the, what the products had done for me. And it has my month by month paycheck on there. Like month one, I made $150, month three, 780 every month since I've signed up three years ago. Okay. And it talks about all the prizes I've won and, you know, trips and incentives and all that stuff. When people get that email, they usually sign up that night because one, I feel like people don't know about the opportunity, don't realize how big it is if we do not tell them. And so I can send this email to Kimberly and she can pass it on to you guys. And obviously you haven't been doing it th for three years and you're not a diamond. So you're not going to have a story like mine, but I always tell people like use my story and say, Hey, this is my friend Christie's testimony. I put on the bottom of this email, you know, this just kind of shows you like how, how I've changing this is. And then put yours on there. Um, I tell people all the time, like I talked mm -hmm. more about the business opportunity and like posted more about the financial side when I was silver to emerald. Um, because now I just feel weird posting about it. Um, but I feel like a lot of times, I mean, when I signed up, I didn't plan on being a diamond. I was like, well, I could never do that. Um, but I was like $500, like that's what I want to be making $500 a month. And so a lot of times I feel like people see that money from silver to like senior Ruby or Ruby. And they're like, okay, that's doable. Like I can make that kind of money and that's life changing money. So, you know, even if it's that you had to get new tires and you didn't have to worry about it, you know, you didn't have to stress about back to school supplies and clothes for your kids. Like Christmas is coming up that you're able to, you know, do Christmas and not be stressed and not have to use credit cards, whatever it is like that is a huge financial testimony. And believe me, more people are going to relate to things like that than to a, a big elaborate testimony. Yes. Like in the end, like everybody should want to be a diamond, should want to be an emerald and have that type of money. But a lot of times, like it's the smaller testimonies that are more relatable to people that are going to be selling points. So, um, as far as cold messaging, that is my tip is to make it super personal and to tell people like, just be honest and tell them the good qualities you see in them and why you know that they would be successful in this business. Um, and then as far as like the reaching out to people about the products in a cold message, usually I'll try yeah. to figure out like if I don't know them personally and I don't know if they have ailments and I'll, you know, kind of, stalk them I guess a little bit on Facebook and see if they happen to say anything like maybe it's that they need energy or maybe they talk about having to go to the doctor and get their diabetes checked or whatever it is and so when I present the products to them in a cold message I tie it in to their ailment okay so if I know somebody has lupus um, and I'm messaging them then I will let them know like hey um, I'm sure you've seen my Plexus post um, I don't know if you you would even be interested, but I would love to send you over a testimony that I read today that made me think of you. And I know that these products could help you. Would you be willing to look at this testimony and tell me what you thought? Y'all, that's it. It doesn't have to be some long drawn out thing, um, but tying it in them, they are, again, people relate to other people's stories, okay? So um, that's really it on cold messaging. And the other thing I would say is, you just have to be brave. Like it takes like 20 seconds of bravery to like send it out. Um, a cold message is not going to kill you. Like if people don't respond, if they tell you no. And a lot of times you guys, I've found that people, they're watching you. After you send a cold message, they might not respond. They might tell you no, but you have planted a seed and they are going to be watching. And maybe they're watching because for one, they want, they want to see if you're going to stick with this or if this is something that you're going to fail at, or they might legitimately be interested in the products or the business. Either way, you've planted a seed and every time you're posting from there on out, they are going to be watching that information and retaining it. Um, okay. So the next one was like going from plan B. When did I realize and kind of what was the timing when I realized that this plan A could be my plan B? So I honestly, even though 
I um, was working my business and getting knew I was going to get to the top that I never planned on quitting my job. And that sounds crazy, but that's not why I started Plexus. Um, I loved my job. I, I had been there for 10 years. I loved a lot of the people I worked with. I loved the construction industry. Um, I loved being on a schedule. Um, but I had grown to hate my boss. I will say that. And so the further I got up in Plexus, he kind of, I think he was didn't like that I was doing both and was maybe a little jealous. And so that he started kind of driving me away from not wanting to stay. And Rebecca, my sponsor would always say, Christy, are you going to, when are you going to quit your job? Like when you go Emerald, are you going to quit? And I was like, no, like, don't even ask me that. Like it stresses me out. And then when I went Sapphire, you know, she was like, are you going to quit your job? And then she'd say, okay, like, are you, when you go diamond, are you going to quit? And so legitimately I knew the day of his wreck that I was going to quit my job. That is the, and I tell people now, like, if it wouldn't have been for his wreck, I would probably still be working at my job, even though I hated my boss because I had been there for 10 years and I'm a super loyal person. And I felt like I, I left that I would be abandoning these people. And so um, for me, I do think like if you don't love your job and you don't love where you're at, like, yes, like that needs to be your end all goal is to be able to quit your job. Um, and I, I think it just comes to a point to where you know that, okay, you don't have to do both. And, you know, Plexus, like I believe in network marketing. I believe in this business. I believe in our products. I believe in our, our opportunity and this can work for me. And so, um, Carrie Wilkerson was our speaker at leaders retreat. And she talked about, um, that to, like to have a why and to really work your business that we all need to find that desperation. Okay. So she said, think about when you first started and maybe it was that you needed that $500 or maybe it was that you wanted your husband to come home work from working his second job. Maybe it's that you wanted to quit your job. Maybe it's that you, you know, needed to take care of your husband, whatever it was. Like she said, the reason you worked your, you're working your business so hard when you first start is because you, your why kind of is like a desperation why. Okay. Does that make sense to y'all? And so she said, if you've already met that first goal or that second goal or whatever it is, then you have to create your own desperation. Okay. So like Dana Kiobo on my team, she's a teacher. She was able to quit her job. She, she hasn't gone back to work. She quit in, I guess the end of last year. And so, you know, she, she was at retreat and she was talking to me and she said, I've kind of lost that desperation because I quit my job. And so she had kind of like gotten a slump this summer. And so she said the other day, she said, my new desperation is like, I cannot go back to work. Like, like I don't want to have to go back to work. Like I want to be the one with my kids every day, like getting to go to their class parties, getting to go to their field trips. And so she said, I felt, I felt. I forgot what it felt like to be in that desperation to be able to hit your goal, to be able to hit your why, because I had already hit it. And so, um, you know, maybe, I don't know. So it's just, it's, I don't know how to explain like how to create desperation. Like for me, thankfully I, I had already worked my business hard enough and had it to a point that when I would have been like, had I been, not been doing plexus or had I been just started plexus, you know, when Kyle's accident happened, I would have been in desperation mode, like immediately, you know, because I would have known like, okay, this has to work for me. Like I have to do it. Um, thankfully I had already done all the hard work. I was almost to the top and I still knew that, okay, I took like 11, the first 11 or 12 days off, um, because he was in ICU and, I just couldn't focus. But after that, like I still worked my business every day from my phone and helped my team because for one, I did know at that point, like this is your lifeline. Like this is your job now. Like you don't have a second income. Like this is it. This is not plan B anymore. This is not fun money. Like this is like it. Okay. And so whatever it is, like 
it might take some deep thinking. Maybe it'll, it, ta it'll, it takes talking to your family, talking to your kids, talking to your spouse and saying, what do I want out of this opportunity? What do I want out of this business? Like we need to sit down as a family and decide what do we want? And so create that desperation and it's going to change how you work your business. Okay. Kimberly said, I've got four and a half minutes. The next thing is going to be follow up and I'll be really quick with this. So if you don't have a, a follow up plan, you need to get one and maybe it's getting a desk calendar and writing down people's names on when you follow up with them. Maybe it's in an alphabetical sequence. Whatever it is, you have to follow up with people, okay? If Rebecca had never followed up with me, I don't know if I would have eventually signed up because I would have just forgot about it, okay? Four months she followed up with me. You guys, I've got people on my team that I have followed up with month and month and month. I mean, I've got, it, I've got a girl that just ordered the Slim and Block combo today. She's been telling me for like three months that she was interested and she was going to order, but she'd never ordered. I'd send her the link. I'd send her information. So about every few weeks, I would send her a voice message. Hey, Susan, it's Christy. I just wanted to see if you had, you know, gotten that email, if you looked it over, if you need, had any questions, needed help, you know, ordering, whatever. I don't ever ask them, hey, you said you were going to order. Like, why haven't you ordered? Um but I'm just kind of dunning them and reminding them that they told me they were interested, like they wanted it. Okay. And another thing I'll use, cause a lot of times people are like, well, what about those people that tell you they're going to sign up or tell you they want to order? And then they don't. So I've learned to extend a lot of grace to people because I'm just as guilty as they are. You know, if I tell somebody I'm going to order a tube of mascara, I usually remember it when I'm driving down the interstate going 90 miles an hour, not legitimately, but you know what I mean? So, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't order that. And so then I get home and I get busy again. And so a lot of times it really is, people are just so busy, life is so busy that they forget. So sometimes like if they tell me that, I'll give them two, three days, maybe even a week. And then I'll send up, I like to do voice messages. I'll send my voice message to say, hey girl, I just wanted to um, see if you've gotten that ordering yet because I didn't get, I didn't get an email and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't miss anything because I want to be able to get you your instructions and help you be successful at this as, as soon as possible. As soon as you get that order in that way you're done in them, but you're kind of making it look like you've, you've dropped the ball on something. Okay. Um, and so a lot of times they'll say, Oh my gosh, I forgot, or I got busy or I'm going to do it when I get paid this week. But that way you're always following up. And so I say until somebody tells you, a hundred percent, like leave me alone. Never talk to me about flexes that you continue to follow up with them. Maybe it's every two months. Maybe if it's somebody that really hasn't told you they want to do it, but you're still like talking to them about it every two months. But, um, I love when we have specials like free shipping and all that. I always follow up with everybody when we have free shipping or like coupon codes or, or sign up specials or anything like that. Um, but follow up is key. Like the fortune is in the follow up. And so, um, again, that's just kind of an accountability thing, holding yourself accountable and making yourself do it and it will be worth it. Um, so Kimberly, sorry, I went to the very end, um, of this, but I hope that y'all got some good information from it. Yeah, and, uh, well, no problem. I forgot to mention to you that we were on the, um, I think it's a 30 minute, but it gives you 40 minutes before it cuts you off. But oh, okay. Yeah, it has that cut down or that time down countdown to the time at the end. And so we're at less than a minute. And I'm sorry, but I am so glad I took like a full page of notes and I had like crazy kids running in and out. So I had to kind of block my camera for a few minutes here and there. <laughs> but I'm so thankful that you jumped on with us. I know everyone, everyone, everyone appreciates you being mm. on here and we're going to upload this on YouTube. We actually have a great lineup of ambassadors uh, sharing with us. So we're so thankful that you were one of them. Oh, well, thank you all. And if you'll send me your email, I'll send you that email I was talking yeah. about. Just awesome. even if you don't want to use mine so you can see like the yeah. setup of it. Absolutely. We'd love that. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Have, have a good, good night. Fun. Thank you.